All right, so I'll. Uh, I don't. Michael Woodson. Oh, you ruined it. <laughs> you got some outtakes. Stand by. I want, I want Stand some- by. Michael Whitson from uh, theoldtry.com. And so, as an Ole Miss alum, thank you very much for coming in. Sure. It's, Thanks uh, for having you know, me. we don't do, we don't really get enough of these interviews. And it's awesome uh, when people come in, essentially their own volition, uh, to come and, come and talk. So I appreciate it. It's, Absolutely. It's great. Um, so I guess let's kick it off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you got you got some cool stories I'm going to get to in a second. But you know, what do you do? And tell us about how you got there. Yeah, right on. Um, so uh, I was here in '99 to '03. Came to the business school um, from Alabama. There was a big out-of-state kind of push um, to get out-of-state students in. Um, so I was a long-haired hippie. Came here to the business school um, the whole time. Probably should have been in the art school, but I was here because I was here on a business scholarship and uh, learned a, a heck of a lot. And uh, so had done business, uh, studied business, did art on the side the whole time, kind of um, Photoshop, um, kind of uh, rogue Photoshop and illustrator work. Did some posters for like Proud Larry's and Campus Recreation. Oh, cool. um, and then so kind of mixed those two things together and then had a uh, left here and, and kind of started uh, working in advertising as an art director. So that's the, the start of the, the path. And where is it, where is it taking you? What are you doing now? So, um, so went from here to, to Atlanta, went to a place called the Creative Circus, which is a portfolio school, learned art direction, learned how to, to design, worked in North Carolina at that agency, moved to Boston uh, in 07, and so my wife and I have been um, with one brief kind of sabbatical back um, south to have our kid, like kind of like military school where you just disappear for nine months and you come back. <laughs> And they're like, where were you? Um, <laughs> Took a break to enter the baby yeah. cave, and then then you're out. And you're like, I'm back. Yeah, right Boston. <laughs> um, so back in Boston. So um, worked in advertising. And now I, I run a creative uh, department, a marketing department inside a health technology company that's Boston based. Well, and a really aggressive, cool one. Yeah. Right? So Athena does neat stuff. Has a super young CEO, and yeah, yeah, really, yeah, they're cool. I mean, they're a cool company to listen to and watch for sure. Yeah. Um, but you, you while you're doing. While you're doing that, so I mean, how did how did this art uh, passion come about? So where I mean, is that something you always had, and uh, you just took business because we threw money at you? Or? Yeah, it was all that money, that uh, that right. out of state money, substantial scholarships S- that we it was, throw. It's, it started out <laughs> feeling like a lot, and then by the end, um, I was like, I have some serious loans. <laughs> But it was enough. Uh, it's, it's like a lot of salaries. It's not hard to incentivize <laughs> a, an 18 year old. Um, in anything with some uh, <laughs> some commas and it's good. You know, I've, I've always kind of wanted to to work in kind of a creative field. I've always thought that um, being able to um, to solve problems and through through different kind of creative uh, explorations like simplification or kind of reframing has always uh, intrigued me. And so a way to do it at one point was like, hey, I'm looking at posters for a band, and I think I could do something different and simpler and, and kind of. Um, solve a problem, like I don't think people know, you know who that band is, or that it's not clear to me when the date is. Um, and so I've always felt that that, that art and creativity are, are just ways of solving business problems. And so I, um, that is, uh, has always um, appealed to me. And so bis- like business and art to me are so inextricably tied that I don't just go create art out of like an overflow of just creative energy in my body, I'm like, your logo sucks, and I think that I could do better than that, and so I want to try to do it. Um, and because I've been able to to do, um, I, I feel like I could probably do better than about sixty percent of the stuff out there. Um, and so if you can always do that, you always have a job because there's sixty uh, percent of people that you're gonna um, remove. And so that was the um, so so working in advertising, you know, they're they're just always problems to solve, and you know, clients come to you with a brief and they're like, how are we gonna do this, and you know sell more chocolate or whiskey or whatever and you're like okay how are we going to boil that down um so um i don't know that didn't really fully answer the question but but i've always, always found those <laughs> things to, to kind of work in relation because you know art art and commerce and and doing art for commerce you know it's the sistine chapel is you know a commission and so i'm like you can't just create art no one's paying for it so yeah it's true so all right so in addition to working though, you have this side hustle or gig, or yep. you run theoldtry.com. And so what is this business, and how did how did that get started? 
Um, so the business is uh, we make we make goods for home and away. So we make stuff that is is for it's very kind of driven by place. So people's connection to place I've always felt is um, is important. Being you know like from Alabama coming to Ole Miss, you know I'm like oh I'm, like I'll tell you where I'm from, and then you come here and you find out where other people are from. And I've always found found fascinating to find where people's journeys are and whether or not they kind of you know embody what living in Idaho was or wasn't like it's you know it's definitely part of, of their story and who they are so um, so old try um, we make home goods that are uh, you know for folks like me living in Boston if I want to or not if I want to I did want to like hang something on my wall to say I was from Alabama and I had the option to get like a football play like a painted Bear Bryant play and I'm like well that doesn't fly because I came here um, you know, I can get like country kitchen and I'm like, that sucks. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, and then, you know, and then anything else would kind of like fall into, to cliche. Um, and so I was like, well, I'll just make the stuff that, that I want and I'll find ways to kind of represent, um, the South and, and places that I know in, in art. Um, and so I had, I started that when I was working in advertising, I had a job that was, um, that was, that was pretty engaging. Like it was a pretty good job, but also. Um, it was really steady and it wasn't that kind of creatively um, demanding. There were, you know, kind of ebbs and flows, but I was like, how do I kind of balance that out with the ability to kind of create when, when I'm not creating at work? And so I had, uh, I worked at this company, company called uh, Sapient Nitro and they're a big digital shop. Uh, and, and I loved it. I had a great creative director and, and I really enjoyed working there, but people were like, hey man, what you think about Sapient? I'm like, it's a really great place to start a business. Because because I'm not you know not worried about like losing my job because like it's stable as a you know as a company, um, and so in 2011 after having worked for for seven years and kind of having seen the way that um, the businesses kind of operate um, really you know working as like a service and, and advertising they bring their business problems you try to solve them you then provide solutions and things for people that they don't they don't take you up on they're like hey it's a great idea but like. It's a little risque, you know, like we don't want our, our, you know, we have different stakeholders or shareholders that, um, you know, we have customers that, they, that may alienate. So you have all these ideas where you're like, oh, I think it would be really cool if we had a website that closed one day a week. And I think it would be cool if we, you know, hand signed every packing slip, like it's impractical and it, you know, isn't, it doesn't make a whole lot of financial sense, but from a branding standpoint, it makes sense. So I had through a lot of, through working a number of different jobs, had a lot of ideas and then when um, the tornadoes came through in Alabama mm -hmm. in 2011, and I, I felt like a, a pull towards home, a number of things kind of coalesced where I was like, I'm a designer, I know design, I have kind of a business underpinning, so I think I can probably figure out some business stuff. I have a number of ideas that I can kind of pull that I've tried to sell clients before they didn't buy that I would like to see how they work as a business. So all that stuff kind of came together. So in 2011, we incorporated Old Try. Um, because I was like, I gotta put on big boy pants and like do it the right way. Um, and I had a friend who had gone to Harvard Business School and he kept trying little things, but every one that he tried, he really went in on it. He tried and he's like, I'm gonna treat it like a real business. And so I, I found that to be um, really kind of, uh, uh, in, uh, not encouraging, but I was um, intriguing. And I was just like, if that's what a dude at Harvard Business School does and he really like commits to it, then that seems like the thing to do. So I'm like, by God, I'm gonna get a lawyer and incorporate this, so. So you, you started it the right way um, with the intention that it would be a kind of a formal business that was gonna be done professionally, so to speak. Um, but the whole time you're doing it, you're still working for this other company. What were the challenges associated with doing that? And I mean, you're still doing that. So it's been going now for seven years, six years? Yeah, six years, yeah. Um, and I mean, what's been the, well, how hard has that been? And what's been the biggest struggle? Uh, it's it's been tough. So my um, you know, my main business partner and the other fifty percent uh, member of the board and stockholder of the board or whatever, since we're incorporated with keep all that stuff, um, <laughs> is my wife. So I'm sleeping with my business partner. Um, so trying to balance that to like uh, so so that's that's like a, a a hard thing to do because it's um, you know, like we. I work a full-time job, more than a full-time job, so you know, 50 hours a week, 55 hours a week, I manage a team of 13 people, and then I come home at night and I do this thing because it's my wife's job and she's able to stay home with, with our kids. Um, and so a, a couple of things that I found, um, that entrepreneurs are the only people that'll work 
80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week. Um, <laughs> and uh, and that, that finding like balance is, is clutch because you can, there's always more that you can do. There's always more that you can push on. And I am such a, like, I'm a, a an ends driven kind of person. Like I, I want like output and, and units of output will help, you know, show whether or not I'm successful or not. And realizing that it's never done and I just have to like cut it off and that like I need to spend two nights a week with my wife and I need to spend a night like drinking with some buddies just to not be working because it's, it's easy to, when you have a side, a side gig, to, you know, that, that is, um, you know, something that kind of brings life to you, you just want to do it all the time and that's good, but also getting that, um, that distance from it is what helps keep it really focused because I'll have 90 minutes on the weekend to like do a week's worth of work and so I just have to like figure it out and like streamline so balance has been tough yeah. and uh, the, maybe the best way to create that balance is just to sort of stop um, so but this requires then you have this outrageous amount of passion to do it all the time um, how's how has it been to try to keep that motivation up so it, you know at some point it's got to be a little bit exhausting so you're, you're worried about site hosting, you're worried about production, you're worried about web design, caching, all these mm -hmm. back-end stuff as well. I mean, it's so many moving parts. Um, and after several years, it's, it's gotta be tough. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's not a morning that I don't wake up thinking about like, okay, what what's the exit strategy? Like, could we sell this thing? Or could we just liquidate it all? And then, and then I'll get an email from a customer who has, you know, just found out about us and is, sees something or buys something and sends a note about how you know it reminds her of spending time with her grandmother um, in Murray, Kentucky. Oh, okay. And then I you're like, to. you're like, okay, well, I'm selling like prints for people, but th what we what we do does speak to people on a on you know different levels. And you're like, well, shoot, like we can't shut it down. Like that's worth you know unlimited number of dollars to just have people looking at what you make and, and thanking you for it. And you're like, you don't have to thank me for like I. Thank you for buying my stuff. But um, so, so I, those are, you know, they're, they're like peaks and valleys and, and they're, it, it can certainly be discouraging on the days where we have no sales and you're like, we've got, we have bills to pay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, and then when your site, when Cloudflare or whoever, I'm not blaming Cloudflare, but maybe, <laughs> um, where, where like it doesn't, you know, if, if you're, if you have a, you know. They're the webs, host and the page doesn't load, but it could be a lot of things, yeah. you know. Russians could have attacked the, right. ne the network access point. It's probably that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so there's, um, you know, you just have to like, you have to dig and commit to it. And, and we do a thing on Fridays, um, this like letterboard quote thing that I started doing years ago. Um, and I just kind of like, it's always like motivational quotes. And I find myself looking at those because I'm like, until like our metals really tested, like what are we doing? If we, we had success out of the gate because we got some great press and that kind of led to other press and then we started at like a critical mass of, of sales and customers. Mm -hmm. um, and so now we're in a season of, you know, we're, we're slowing down. I don't know mm -hmm. if that means that kind of the market that we're in is cooling off with like the maker movement and like handcraft and stuff is like, you know, if the pendulum is swung this way and we're starting to come back the other way, is like our price point wrong or is our product mix wrong or what? But I've, now that I'm dealing with it, I look at those things and I'm like, you know, we gotta push through, like don't let fatigue make a coward of us. Uh, Steve Prefontaine said that. I'm like, yes, we're tired, but like, we can't just like bow out. Or maybe we should bow out. That's also the like crazy thing is trying to figure out like, was it that we should just like power through it? Or is it that we should, you know, like exit and go find something else to do? Like we've had great success with this. Um, do we have you know, more that we can offer someplace else by starting something new? Mm -hmm. And how, um, along those lines, and so you started it, how did you get the good press out of the gate? Uh, and uh, and then talk about kind of how well why did you keep your other job you signed up, what your wife's doing it full time yeah she left her job uh, in advertising like four and a half years ago so she's been doing this you know as the like putting the the food on the table um, for a while um, the sorry I, I don't remember the first question how did you get it started so you got good press out of the oh yeah so. yeah so we. Um, so I didn't know what to do. I'd worked in advertising, but I'm also like a cynic. And I'm like, well, I think that if, you, if you've got something that is really unique and different, it will sell itself, which isn't necessarily true. But 
when working on like parody products, we're like, hey, you know what? That guy makes whiskey and that guy makes whiskey and that guy makes whiskey and they're all 90 proof whiskeys aged in Kentucky in the same geographic strat. Like nothing is very different. It just comes down to the marketing and how much you're gonna spend and what story you're gonna put with it. But like the product's kind of the same. And so for us, it was like, well, nobody's making this thing. And so like, by God, I believe in it. Um, and so I sent like a number a number of emails to, to bloggers, um, all of which were, you know, summarily ignored, um, except for one that happened to hit Grace Bonney, the editor of Design Sponge. She was a Southerner from Virginia, living in Brooklyn, had started Design Sponge, like wildly success, successful um, site. And she, the story that I put in there, I'm like, hey, I'm a Southerner, and I'm trying to deal with like what being a Southerner is. and. Um, you know, I feel disconnected from home and I don't know necessarily that I want to move back there, but I want to like express my feelings for it. And I want to like, you know, put a positive light on a place that I think is kind of maligned oftentimes. And she just happened to read that and was like, I feel you. And so she wrote about us. Like I didn't hear anything um, uh, until we went to a wedding and then friends were blowing my phone up and they're like, you're on the front page of Design Sponge. And cool. so that was, it was just kind of like, fortuitous but also like I think our what we made spoke to her and then and then spoke to the other people who saw it and they're like I'm from Durham North Carolina and that that is kind of true to what to what I know from the Piedmont of North Carolina and so um, that was that thing and then there's another question about yeah. so my wife doing it yeah so you built it and then yep. how did you decide at one point so we were talking about this offline right so you know we used to when we were talking about teaching people to go start stuff we would tell them like all right well put your flag on the ground burn your boats for every other option you might have and charge ahead and that that led to a lot of people burning up a lot of boats um, yeah and not not necessarily a whole lot of great plans because when you're just starting mm -hmm. particularly on the web i mean you don't know you don't know what the size of the market looks like you don't know what a customer is going to look like in any real capacity uh in terms of the volume and the profit um so how, how, what was that decision like then? So you guys were both doing this as this sort of yep. side gig. Uh, you had this kind of, you have this neat quirk where you don't, the site's closed on Sunday, like a, you, like a used old, to be. Okay. Big business has now pushed <laughs> us in other directions. <laughs> well, in my understanding. I gotta get the dirty Sunday, <laughs> the Sunday money. <laughs> we we gave up on our convictions. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it used to be, you, you, the way you explained it to me before, it was sort of this double-edged sword, right? So it was part of the branding of the story, mm -hmm. which is it's closed like an old old general store on Sunday. Um, but at the same time, that was the day to catch up on all the orders. Right, right? Yep. So you can't, by Sunday, you know you're caught up and you're good. You can start work on Monday and yep. uh, then you got a couple more days to catch up. Um, what was it like to to, to to sort of have that conversation where she, she stops working? Yeah, well, when we looked at it, <laughs> So um, we made that decision after about a year and a half, um, uh, and it was because I was doing it, you know, coming home, no kids at this time, dinks, we're just making tons of money, <laughs> spending tons in rent in Boston, um, not making tons of money, but but so we're both we're both doing our jobs. Then I'm coming home, you know, and we're spending some time together. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go work on this thing, and so then you know I'd be working on it, and then I'd be packing up stuff, and then. Um, we realized, uh, and I think it's kind of like the frog in boiling water. You don't exactly realize what's happening, but at some point, Mariana, um, it's just like, we don't spend any time together anymore. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm just like on weekends, we don't go out of town because I'm spending all day Saturday and Sunday catching up on emails or packing up prints or designing new prints. And, you know, my wife is doing coaching lacrosse or whatever, um, helping a lot, but it, since it's kind of my my thing, you know, my passion thing. Um, so we're like, okay, what are we gonna do? So I, I had, I was working at Sapient, had a good job, great people that I worked with, um, really enjoyed it. Marina was working at like a place and she was like, I could take it or leave it. She wasn't really passionate about the business, but um, so we're like, well, here's the deal. Like we, if we wanna spend more time together, someone's gonna have to give. I, I don't wanna get rid of old try yet because like we seem to be doing fine, you know, in like our first year. Um, we might have made like 180,000 in revenue or something. So like, you know, good, um, good volume coming in. Um, only open six days a week. So we're like, well, crap, at some point, you know, we can open up on Sundays and just increase that. So um, so we, we were going to have some press that was gonna come out in Southern Living. And we're like, hey, if we get that, if we get press in Southern Living and like it is as big as our mentioning Garden Gun, 
because we had an email mission guarding gun and did like thirty thousand dollars in a day or something. So mm -hmm. I was like, crap. That's so maybe Southern Living will be like this will be the thing. We'll both quit our jobs. Um, but I was like, but we got to be ready for that. Um, and so after, uh, so we saw that coming. Wife didn't really love her job, so we made that decision. We're like, well, we can, between my job and what we currently see coming in, we can we can afford to do this. And if it doesn't work, well, you can go back to work. But you know, we're we're definitely gonna, you know, bail on the job that's earning us the less, the um, the least amount. So she left. She did that thing. Southern Living mentioned petered out, which was a total bummer, because um, we're like, well, crap, we planned for this thing, this thing didn't happen, um, and then, um, and so then we're like, well, let's, you know, we'll keep doing, we'll, we'll figure it out, like we, um, I think as a, you know, business owner, you, you have expectations, you have, the, the, the beautiful thing about where we sit right now in business is like, if Oprah were to like tweet about us tomorrow, like, holy crap, we're gangbusters, like we will just, you know, have so much business, but then um, the, the frustrating thing is that if you don't get it, you're like, well, how is anyone gonna know to come to our site? Mm -hmm. um, and so so it was, you know, it was a calculated decision that we made just based off what we saw. Um, and, you know, and we've always tried to kind of increase our business, but I, I think that, I think working, having a day job um, has allowed us to, to say no to a lot of things that don't align with our, with our company. Like we make stuff that connects people to place and there are all kinds of opportunities where people will write and they're like, hey, I'd love to partner up and do this, you know, X, Y, Z thing. And we're like, well, that doesn't really align with what we're, what we do and that pays, but like, we don't just want to take money because we're in a, you know, a position of needing funds to keep going because I have a day job. So it's, it's helped us really keep the brand kind of focused on what we, what we do and make um, what I feel are, are good decisions for us from a brand where we could, um, you know, make some money, but it may also kind of convolute what it is that we're doing and like what value we offer there so a day job lets us like um i think really kind of operate from our convictions until we have to open on sunday because uh, then sometimes the real world comes uh, into play and you have two kids and, and you're like that's that's just a day where um you know it's the largest con conversion day uh low traffic day but a lot of people do their their shopping on sundays online so mm -hmm. uh we just had to make the decision like yeah it was good to do it was fun it was a good branding thing but um we got bills <laughs> bills to pay uh, all right, so last question then. So if you were looking back uh, to a uh, long-haired hippie from Alabama, uh, bought and paid to come to Mississippi to study business, uh, what would you tell yourself when you were 20? Well, hindsight, man, is just such a different thing. So thinking about, you know, I I came to class, I, gra I graduated with honors, like I really worked hard while I was here and, and really, um, really took school seriously. But I, I think that there's some amount of... Um, just experience that you just don't know yet what it is that would be valuable. Mm -hmm. And so I look back at classes where I'm like, man, that I really wish that that would have stuck with me, but it only didn't stick with me because I had no frame of reference in which to, to put it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and so I think now that there, there are so many tools, you know, I was here before Facebook um, and a lot of the internet, I remember in a business class, one of, um, gosh, what was his name? One of the professors here was like, Okay, I want you to open your, um, you know, AltaVista browser, and I want you to type in G O O G L E dot C O M, and it's probably like HTTPS. Um, so like Google didn't even exist. So mm -hmm. now I think that there are so many tools, and I see so many really great projects that are out there, and people creating businesses. Um, and so I think that you know, kids in college, like, if you're going to do something, like, why not while you're able to get the education, also try out of something like try selling i don't know what it is making the like we we're talking earlier the uber of anything like the uber of baseball cards or the uber of like green sports coats what <laughs> try a something so that you've got some frame of reference to then take that learning that's that's that you're paying for that really smart people are are trying to impart on you but have some way to like connect those dots because i think yeah. without that connection um if it falls flat through no fault of anyone here but now i'm like Dang, man, I'd love to go get an MBA because I, I there are so many things that now I could put with it, and I'm like, absolutely, I, I know what you're thinking. I know that you're thinking about like, you know, whatever the profit motive is, or how we're going to monetize that, or what, like, what we're really doing, sitting on the, all this inventory, and we should be putting our money elsewhere, working for us. So, um, I'd say like, you know, try, try the thing, build the thing. Who cares what it is? It could you could blow up, you know, and that would be amazing. And then, like, that's why you're here at school. 
unless you're here for liberal arts, just for the sake of learning. But um, <laughs> yeah, that. we love them too. Yeah, I know. Uh, hey, we can build a business around just learning. We totally. do it all the time. It's a whole big building around it. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere. Well, M Michael Whitson, thanks so much. Yeah, man. absolutely. Appreciate it. Thanks yeah. so much.